are a huge time and thumb saver, but they can be a bit finicky to use, especially if you're not familiar with them, so here are some tips for using them. The basic idea with the repeater pipette is that you're able to pipette up once and dispense a lot of times, the same volume multiple times. So with a normal pipette, what happens is you suck up or you aspirate a single time, single volume, and then you dispense once, a single time, a single volume. But what if you have a lot of tubes and they all want you all want them all to have the same volume in them? Well, here's where the repeater pipette comes in really, really handy. If you have a sample with the same amount of the same thing that you want to put multiple places. So with this, it's like the Energizer Bunny of pipettes. You pipette up once, so you aspirate up once, but you're aspirating up a much larger amount than you actually are going to want to push out each time. So you suck it up once, and now what's going to happen is that you can set the step size to give different portions. And now each time you press the lever, you're going to get a single step out. And I can make it so that I have smaller step sizes, and then I can give smaller portions. And if I go to a smaller tip, I can do even smaller portions. So this is the repeater pipette, and here's more on how the specifics of how to use it. I'm going to be using this like Eppendorf repeater M4. I'm not endorsing this brand or anything like this. This is just a really common one. I've used it in this lab. I've used it in my past lab. Now there's some like electronic ones and things like this that are more fancy dancy, um, but this good old workhorse does the trick. And so when you're putting the tip in, first there are different tip sizes with different step increments we'll go into, so you can't always get exactly the volume that you want, um, but you can choose which tip to use based on the volume that you, that you want. Um, and there are like guides online, you can see what type of tips will do what volumes. You can use like a rack, or I typically just take them straight out of the bag, so either they're sterile wraps individually or they're in like a bulk bag. No matter what you do, you want to always grab them from the top, don't touch the bottom, so you keep that as clean as possible. When you stick the tips in, um, so there are different size tips, and we'll talk about this, and the different tips will allow you to do different step sizes or different amounts that you can pipette each time. And when you put the tip on, basically you want to um, go from the top, um, stick this in to the hole, and you hear that click, you wanna make sure you hear that click. But that's not all. You then need to push down this bottom lever until you hear another click, and now you're in. Sometimes you put it in, and it doesn't go in right, and you get this error message. Don't freak out, just eject the tip. So push down on the bottom, push it out. Um, the tip will come out. And now try it again. Make sure that you get it straight into that center of the hole. Hear that click and then stick down. So now you're snapped into place. You need to set your step size. So this is how much you're going to pipette each time. So with the 10 milliliter um, tip, I have the option to go by multiples of um, 0.1, so 100 microliters. And so I can go up to 2 mils, in which case I can have 5 steps because this holds 10 milliliters, or I can go all the way down to 100 microliters, in which case I have 100, um, it'll be able to pipette out 100 times. So let me just set it for 500, so half a mil. And now it tells me I can make 20 aliquots. So this bottom lever, this is just going to pull the liquid up and push it back out without doing any step sizes, just how much you pull and how much you push. But if you want to actually make the steps come out, then you're going to use this top button. So the top button is what you do to get the step sizes, the different like individual portions that you're taking out. And then this is just to suck it up so that you have enough to dispense out um, and then to push out any remainder that's left over afterwards. And so if, you're, if you have to refill it multiple times, which you can totally do, I recommend refilling it before you actually get to the last one because the last one's often a bit like off because there could be air or bubbles or stuff like that. Um, so just go ahead and suck some more up than you need and it'll all be okay. Um, we'll get into how you don't trust that first and that last sample though. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my pipette, I'm going to stick it in my sample and I'm going to pull up on the bottom lever. And so the bottom lever, remember, it's just going at like the speed of my thumb. And now to actually make the steps come out, I'm going to push with this top lever. And so when I'm pushing with this top lever, each time after that first one um, should be the exact step size that I set it for. And so I have it set to 500 microliters, so half a milliliter, um, and it's telling me I've gone one step, I've gone two steps, you can see how many steps it goes, and so with each time it's coming out 500 microliters. And what's really handy is that you can then do this and you can then put it into each of your separate tubes. And each time I press down, I'm getting another aliquot out. And then 
there's some left over, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it down with my lever, push that out, and now I can go ahead and eject the tip. So to eject it, you push down, and then you snap out. And that's how you use a repeater pipette. So I made it blue just so you could see it. Um, but this could be anything that you want to aliquot or make like smaller portions of. And so this could be a loading dye for your gel. This could be antibiotic stock solutions. And aliquots are super duper helpful because they allow you to um, do less like freeze thaws and also contaminate your original stock less. Um, so you don't have to keep going into an original thing. Um, but this is just dye for Dymo. They also come in really handy when you're doing like setting up crystallography trays and you have like all these different conditions that you want to test out, but maybe you want to add an additive to all of them that's not in your screen, so you have to add it to everything. Um, and you can use the repeater pipette to do that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And note that the because the tips are really fat, you might have to, um, they're not gonna, some of them are not gonna fit. So like the 10 mil is not gonna fit into a 15 micro, 15 milliliter falcon tube. So if you wanted to do 15 mils, um, you would still want to make it in a 50 mil falcon tube or you'd have to like transfer it to this once you realize oh the tip isn't going to fit in there now what's going to happen is you so you take your sample and you pull the lever all the way up now there's going to be it's not going to be exact how much is in there and so the first time it squirts out isn't going to be exact and so don't trust the first squirt instead just squirt it back into what it was and so you can see that was a kind of small squirt but now what's going to happen is that each time i squirt it should be taking out 500 um milliliters. I mean microliters. Um, and note how it's also kind of squirting, so you want to make sure that you're inside of the tube when you're, um, when you're pipetting it. But if you're doing this into something where there's unique samples in each of these, then you don't want to be touching the wells. Be really careful if you're using this for like a mini prep or something. Um, if it has like ethanol and then you're kind of like spilling the ethanol on the outside of the tubes, this can make your labels wash off, it can interfere with other things, and so be careful about that. You also, so I said like don't trust that first um, that first time out. You also don't want to trust like the last time out. So if I pull some more up, remember I have to snap down this bottom lever and then I pull some up. Now maybe I pull up a little bit of air. So you wanna try to avoid pulling up air, but say I do. Okay, so now that first one we don't trust. Now we do a couple good ones, we do some good ones. But then at the end, we have this like weird stuff where like air starts coming out and stuff. And so be careful at the end that you're, that's not happening to you. And then there'll always be a little bit left over. So when you're pulling things up in the beginning, you want to avoid getting any air. And so you might not want to pipette up like everything that's in your tube, just go most of the way. And you can always refill it. Um, and after, if you've used all the aliquots, so I can only make 20 aliquots, but if I um, wanted more, I could just refill it. And remember to pull up, you to get more in here, you just pull up the lever. Don't trust that first one. And now you're good to pipette out into your different tubes. So the 10 mil works great if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to do like large aliquots like this. But say I wanted to do something where I have small volumes, maybe in PCR tubes or in a PCR rack. In this case, the 10 mil isn't gonna suit our purposes, so let's go ahead and inject that, push it down, push it down, and that'll come off into your waste bin, um, but I can't see it with the camera angle. Um, so basically, there are different tip sizes. So that was a 10 mil. You have a 2.5 mil. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Okay, so I snap it in, I snap it down, and now I can also see how many steps it allow me and what step size. So you can see that it's moving at multiples of 25 microliters. So I have 25 microliter step sizes that I can choose from. Okay, to again, to eject, I'm gonna push down, push down, and it comes off. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, this one's 100 microliters. If I snap this one on, so remember snap, down, now it's gonna look and see how much, what the step sizes are. So for a 100 microliter one, I can go by step sizes of one microliter. Um, but remember, then if you go to a bigger size, you're not gonna have that one microliter option. So with the 200 one, so you can see here that this one ain't kind of crooked, that's not gonna work. I need to make sure that it goes in straight, um, push down, and now it's all good to go. And you can see that now I'm moving in step sizes of two microliters. So with the 0.1 mic mil, with, so with the 100 microliter, I could go by one microliter increments. With the 200, I can only go by two microliter increments. And so you might not be able to do exactly what you want. 
but let's say we wanted to go to um, 40 microliter aliquots. So again, this is um, not going to fit all the way down into a tube like this. So you need to be strategic when you're making your mixtures that it's gonna be in something that you can actually get the volume out of. Um, and so I've actually in the past like sawed the top off of tubes when I realized that it didn't fit. Um, but anyway, okay, so you pull up. And remember, don't trust that first one. But now I can go and I can go into each of these wells and I can pipette down these samples. And if I had a smaller step size, I'd be able to do more of these wells. When you're using one of the ones with small volumes, you wanna be really careful that things are actually coming out when you are going. Because if you're going really fast into all these tubes with these tiny volumes, you need to make sure that the sample is actually getting out. And so be sure that you're pipetting like onto the wall of the tube or something like this and that you can see the drops come out. If you're trying to buy pet something and you might get just like the bead stuck on the outside of the tip rather than going in your sample. So be really careful with those small aliquots that are hard to see. Another option when you have things in strips like this is like a multi-channel. So with a multi-channel, you pull up a single time, but then you dispense a single time. Um, and so you're going to be, have to have your sample that you're pulling from spread out over the different wells so that you can pull it up and then put it out. And so you can prepare things in say like a PCR strip or another plate, um, but you're gonna have to have a little extra on each of the different wells. You can have different things in the different wells that you can then put in, whereas with the repeater pipette, you're gonna be pipetting the same thing, the same volume into all of these different. You always wanna make more than you think that you'll need because there's always gonna be liquid stuck on the pipette and things like this. And so you always wanna make more than you need. But for when you're using a repeater pipette or a multi-channel, this is especially true because for a multi-channel, um, you're either gonna have to make a lot more so you have it in like a reservoir or in a PCR strip and then each of those tips, you have to have a little extra to account for. Um, and so you're gonna have to make quite a bit more if you're using a multi-channel. You still need to make more if you're using a repeater pipette, but not quite as much more as you would have had to make for the multi-channel probably. Um, but because you're not going to be able to really use the first and the last, what you can do is you can actually um, take another pipette and get the end out. And that's how you use a repeater pipette.